This video is going to uh, show you where buoyancy or the force of buoyancy comes from, the buoyant force, however you want to say that. So let's take a cube that's underwater, as I've shown here, and it's going to have a force on the top of it due to the hydrostatic pressure, or sometimes called pressure at depth. So that pressure is going to exert a force due to all the water on top of it, on top of the cube. There's also going to be force on the bottom, and that's also due to hydrostatic pressure. And the force is going to go up, not down, because remember, pressure goes in all directions because of the random motion of the molecules. So it's going to actually go up in this case, which sounds odd, but true. Now I've got two forces, so since I'm talking about forces, let's look at a free body diagram. So here's the free body diagram. If I take a look at the force on the bottom, it's going up, and the force on the top, it's pointing down from my free body diagram. So if I was to add these two, so the force on the bottom uh, plus the opposite of the force on the top, and basically I just connected them tip to tail, and the force I get left, or the force that I have left, is the buoyancy force. So the buoyancy force, which I'm abbreviating with the letter B on the right, is equal to the difference in these two forces. Something else about the buoyancy force, it's pointing up. The buoyancy force is always going to point in the opposite direction of gravity. So it's going to point up. If I look at this a little bit more, the buoyancy force, it's due to a pressure. That's going to be uh, pressure on the bottom times the area of the bottom minus pressure on the top minus the area of the top. And then because it's the pressure comes from the hydrostatic pressure, I've got this distance from the surface of the water, which I'm calling H top, and I've shown in the diagram over there on the left. And then I've got the distance down to the bottom surface, called H bottom. So the buoyancy force is equal to rho G H bottom times the area of the bottom minus rho G H top times the area of the top. Now I can use the distributive property and combine some terms, so I get rho G A times the difference between the height of the bottom and the height of the top, or really, you know, depth, however you want to look at that. And then if I look at this a little bit closer, I can see that the height of the cube is actually the difference in these two heights. So I can replace that expression in the parentheses with just the height of the cube. But anytime you have a uniform object and you have the area times its height, that's going to give you the volume. So the buoyancy force is equal to rho G V, where capital B I'm using as the variable for the buoyancy force measured in newtons, the fluid's density in kilograms per meter cubed to standard units, and the acceleration due to gravity in meters per second squared. And capital V, not lowercase, but capital V, is the volume of the body that's underwater. So right now the whole thing's underwater, but it's only the amount that's underwater that accounts for the buoyancy, or the buoyant force, however you want to say that.